here we are. So, welcome to the Hypermedia Application Web Multimedia course. I'm Franca Garzotto, and the teacher who is supporting me is Professor Vittorio Zaccaria, who will do a little part of the course. And we have two teaching assistants, uh, uh, Mattia Gianotti and Francesco Vona. Uh, I will sometimes switch between this presentation, full screen presentation and slide presentation when I hear that some people want to be admitted and also to look at the chat. Um, so uh, let me see if there's other person who want to get admission. One second. Well, see not. OK. So thank you for participating in this lesson. And thank you for your patience, uh, because it is my first lesson online. I did uh, some um, online lessons uh, uh, in other modes, uh, but this is somehow new for me and for you. So probably you also have better experience than me, because you have tried other lessons. So if you have any question or suggestion, please use the chat. And again, please turn your uh, microphone off uh, and your video off uh, so that uh, uh, there, will, there will be less noise and we will be able also to improve performance. So in this first lesson, um, my goal is to introduce the course, uh, to present the main topics uh, and to present uh, how the exam will be done and also to start assigning you the project that you will have to uh, to develop in this course. So what is this course about? It's about uh, what we call web-based content intensive hypermedia, uh, web applications for short. Uh, you're all familiar with web application, you use it in your everyday life. Uh, we consider a specific class of web application, which are content intensive, so they have a lot of content multimedia content of different kind, text, uh, video, audio, animations, uh, and they have a hypermedia structure. With uh, hypermedia, I mean uh, um, content that uh, has multiple media, uh, that is interactive, and it is hyper, that is non-linear, uh, which means uh, the content is uh, topologically structured as a graph, uh, not necessarily as a tree or as a forest, but at it's a graph uh, with many nodes, different connections uh, between nodes. Uh, the nodes, uh, roughly speaking, correspond to pages uh, or to portion of pages. Uh, and the topological connection between these nodes uh, typically correspond uh, to links. So uh, we have uh, this double uh, dimension of intensity. It's intensive. These applications that we consider are intensive with respect of the data. They are driven by the data, driven by the content, and they are also intensive in terms of multiple connections, multiple links uh, between the different portions of these contents. Um, in modern, uh, I I am quite old, so I belong to the generation before the web. I, when I started my my work as PhD student, the web did not exist. Uh, it came out in. 1991, um, and I, I am one of the few people in the world uh, who can say that uh, uh, we saw the demo uh, of the, the first demo of the World Wide Web by Tim Berens-Lee, who presented it uh, at Hypertext Conference uh, uh, 90, 1991 um, in, in the US, uh, and he was showing us uh, how he could connect different documents from CERN, from the local computer or from different uh, computers in the world. And it was introducing us to the concept of a, a World Wide Web. So a web, a network of interconnected documents located potentially everywhere in the world. So the web, as you know it now, is really originated by this idea of having a web-based hypertext. At that time, we could also only manage text as a, as a medium. And then it became uh, hypermedia, so adding multiple media. And then uh, through web enabling web technology, it was this enormous network content spread around the world. Unfortunately, uh, uh, now 
uh, we lost in a sense the concept of hyper. We lost the idea that we needed to structure contents, uh, we need to organize the contents uh, in a usable way. And that is what, so we, many websites uh, are just you, a set, uh, a bunch of huge, very long scrolling pages where you find everything and you uh, and you get lost in the content. You just have to scroll and, and, and discover by yourself what is there. And one of the goals of this course uh, is actually to, to help you to organize your content in a way that is more usable and more effective uh, for the user. Emphasizing the need, uh, and, and when you emphasize the need for organization, you need to emphasize uh, the role of connecting structures, so the role of links. And links are, in most cases, are reification, are operationalizations of relations, in meaningful relationship between contents. And that is the core idea. So creating more usable websites in which the content is better structured and is more usable for the end users. And deliver more added value to the, to the users. Um, we have a number of educational goals, so that is what you will learn in this course. Uh, you learn some knowledge, I mean some factual knowledge about design, some methods and guidelines uh, for designing usable web applications. You will learn some knowledge about uh, methods and guidelines for usability. Usability is, is a broad concept with basically means uh, easiness of use, uh, easiness to use for the end user. We will uh, uh, give you a feeling about what accessibility means, so how to make uh, uh, your web applications uh, um, available as much as possible to all users, including users who do not have uh, uh, the full skills, cognitive or physical skills uh, as most of the population. Uh, and also you will learn knowledge about web technology. Um, little break to, to check if there is anyone uh, uh, who is asking uh, for no one, Francesco? Okay, well, let me just introduce you, Francesco. So I think that you can Hi, see. Hi, everybody. Okay, here is Francesco Vona. Uh, the other teaching assistant with Mattia Gianotti is not here at the moment. He's doing a, a research internship in Spain. Okay. So you will also learn something in terms of skill. So skill means ability to doing to do something, and your skill will be in the realm of a conceptualization, uh, which means capability of specifying content structures, navigation, and presentation characteristics of your web application at the proper level of abstraction. So try to uh, abstract from the level of I have to implement something or I have to create this content and conceptualize uh, your, um, your, the things that you want to do, the thing that you want to build before actually building it. So uh, conceptualization is the step uh, before the actual creation of content and the actual implementation. Um, you will have a touch of, um, of, of aesthetic design, so how uh, to render uh, your web application in the best possible way, way visually, so so that uh, using the website is also a pleasurable experience. Then skills about how to evaluate the usability, how to design for usability, how to evaluate for usability. Skill about how to enforce the accessibility, the accessibility property of your application. And then skills about how to implement things. So capability of defining the software components of your web application and implementing them. And uh, how to select the most appropriate technology, uh, technologies and how to put together to integrate uh, uh, this technology to achieve the, the best performance, the most performant web application. So these are the three categories of contents uh, that we will present you in the course uh, and you will have to learn in order to make your project. Methodology, techno back-end technology, and front-end technology. And I will go quickly through all these topics. Uh, in terms of methodology, uh, methodology is related to, again, to four main items, four main themes, uh, how web conceptual design. 
um, here the idea is that uh, uh, you should learn, so we, we explain you how to um, address the design problem uh, and to split the design problem into multiple sub problems. So to split the, the big design space into multiple dimensions. Two main dimensions are information, that is the content, how to design the content, navigation, how to design uh, the appropriate link structures, and presentation, how to organize content into pages, pages or screens, uh, uh, that is the final thing that the, the actual thing that the end user will see. But in our perspective, presentation uh, is uh, the last uh, but not least uh, step in the design process. So how to split the design space into multiple dimensions, uh, information navigation presentation, uh, how to organize uh, your, how to define your so-called information architecture, and uh, uh, the, the method that uh, we will use uh, is called IDM, which stands for Interactive Design Model. It is a design model which uh, was uh, created uh, in the 90s, but it's still, uh, uh, we had a number of publications about this. Uh, it's still relatively, we still use it because it's, um, it's a good compromise between simplicity and completeness. So it's simple enough to be explained in a couple of lessons uh, and it's powerful enough to, to capture, uh, to help you capture and describe and represent uh, the main design decision in terms uh, mostly of information and navigation um, choices. Then uh, uh, we will have a designer in our team who will uh, uh, present, uh, uh, will give a lecture about how to what are the basic principles of visual design uh, for web interfaces? These are general principles of visual design that uh, can be some, something that is typically um, uh, explained at the design courses and design program. But I think it's also important for engineers, for a computer engineer to have uh, some guidelines uh, on how to uh, display their content, organize their interfaces, in the best possible way from a visual perspective. Uh, then, uh, um, time permitting, uh, we will have uh, one lesson about accessibility. So what are the general guidelines and standards in order to make uh, your website accessible to as many people as possible? And uh, uh, we will discuss uh, uh, methods for web usability both in terms of how to design a usable website and also how to evaluate uh, for usability websites. And uh, actually, web usability, I used to, to give lectures of, on web usability in the middle of the course, but I have decided, uh, given the current circumstances of teaching, and to, to anticipate um, uh, these uh, lectures and these uh, the next two lessons uh, will be devoted to web usability. In terms of technology, um, there will be a, a number of lectures uh, devoted to, to uh, explain you uh, some backend and front-end technology. I, I, I must say that uh, there is a huge offer of backend and front-end technology today, so we had to make a choice uh, also based on the on the experience from the from past courses. So the selection of technology uh, is, uh, I mean, it's based on several criteria. Um, the technology that we presented during the course, uh, both for the back end and the front end, uh, are mandatory in the sense that you will be required to um, use these, exactly these technologies uh, for implementing your project. So if you have other ideas, other proposals, um, you will, uh, uh, okay, we cannot take them into account. I suspend from a second because I see that there are, um, okay, there are two questions. One is, please, uh, the, um, uh, would the lecture recordings be available on Beep? The answer is uh, uh, yes and no, in the sense that uh, hopefully we are recording these lessons. Hopefully, at the end of the lessons, uh, uh, the people on the chat will see the link uh, 
to uh, to to see uh, the you know, to 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 access the the video of the lecture on streaming. I will post on Beep the um, the the link of the video streaming of the videos after each lesson. Uh, I'm not sure because some colleagues told me that uh, one and a half hour lecture create a, a file which is too big for being posted on Beep. So we were working on it. We, we might make a, a YouTube channel in which we post all of our videos. In any case, the link to the video will be available during, on the chat. So for all of you during the lesson, it will take time. Uh, my colleagues told me that it takes time or after a few hours, it will be available on Beep. So everything will be recorded. It's just uh, how you will be able to use the video. Uh, that is still something to be fixed. And the second question, um, okay, we will find solution. Second question is uh, uh, about the project. Uh, I will postpone the answer to this question when I will present the project and discuss how it's going to be uh, done. Okay. Okay. So basically, I don't see much here. Okay. Basically, uh, our general approach is uh, a three-layer architecture, three-tiers architecture, in which uh, uh, some of you have already. Um, already known from from other courses uh, in software engineering similar but basically there this three layer consists of the presentation layer the application layer and the data layer the core content here is uh, uh, that uh, there are data because the application is data driven uh, the application la layer is the one that manages uh, all uh, the uh, dynamic and computational aspects of the application and the presentation layer is uh, the layer uh, in which you deliver this content and make them perceivable to the user. So it's the layer that the user has to do only with the presentation layer, layer and, but um, uh, where uh, the contents and the um, um, the contents are managed through the application la layer, accessing to the data layer, and. Uh, in um, the user interacts on the presentation layer with the application and the interpretation of uh, his or her comments or his or her interaction are interpreted application layer uh, and use the data layer if, if it is necessary. And you see a, a, a general overview of, of the technologies that uh, just, just um, um, the names and then they will be explained during the course. So basically, the presentation layer in, is managed by the browser uh, that communicate through an HTTP protocol of the application layer, and the presentation layer uh, uh, wraps the content, uh, uh, renders the content uh, using uh, tools such as uh, tools and programming uh, languages or, or programming tools such as HTML, CSS, and JS. Uh, the application layer uh, communicate uh, with, uh, and then we will go to the detail concerning <laughs> the back end. So this is the part of the front end. That is what you will learn uh, in terms of programming and technology for the front end. And then these uh, all uh, these elements has have to do with the back end. So the, uh, do you have any question at this point? Other specific questions? Okay, but I have questions for you. Um, differently from the past years. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I'm okay. I don't have the coronavirus. <laughs> um, different from the, the past uh, uh, years, uh, uh, this course now is offered only in um, in the master program, Laura Magistrale. Uh, so we can rise a bit the level of complexity uh, of technology and the level of our expectation on your ability to use technology. So I have a question for you. How many of you um, uh, know already these front-end technologies? So please uh, post, uh, say yes. Uh, front-end technology, yes, we know it. Uh, if you post these answers on chat, it would be useful for us to understand uh, how, how smart you are already. <laughs> Okay, so please type on beep uh, on the chat the answer. Okay, I yes, I know this technology rather well, or so and so, or no at all. Uh, and I will ask you. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh no, okay. That, that's then we will make the statistics at the end of the of the of the card class. 
Concerning backend technology, how many of you feel comfortable with this technology? They know them already. Uh, they think they can man they can do something with the technologies already. Um, okay. Must be sure that uh, what is the yes and what is the no for the two questions, uh, but we hope we will be able. Okay, so it seems that the back end is uh, less known. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, please, uh, so this is a course offered to, um, to different uh, master programs, uh, engineering and design. Um, okay, I can see the list of students uh, with their master program associated uh, from the, from the, um, uh, from the from online services but I would like to know how many designers are present now uh, at this uh, at, the, at, at this class in, in the class now in this virtual class so I would like to ask the designer to just post a note say I am a designer so we will see how many okay Okay, I'm a designer. Okay, let's see. So welcome designers uh, in this. Uh, it's a pity that you don't have uh, that designers and engineers do not physically meet and but also virtually uh, you can uh, uh, by osmosis learn something uh, from each other. Okay, we will elaborate the numbers and the answers uh, later. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, only six at the moment. Okay, so backend technology. Or maybe Francesco, you can comment about it. Then you discuss it with Professor Zaccaria, who cannot be present. Okay. Just a few uh, words. Okay, about the, not involving the project, but about In the general. general pattern. Okay, backend technology refers to all the technologies that uh, end user uh, doesn't see. Uh, so there is uh, an application server, an application layer, and then the data layer where uh, data are stored, basically. And um, the application layer is um, uh, exposed to the client through REST API or other uh, other API, and um, this is ba basically how it works. The three tiers uh, uh, architecture in this case, and in the application server, usually run all the uh, logic of the application. Usually we can choose to run this logic uh, on the front end or on the back end, but best practice uh, uh, suggests to use it in the back end. And then there is also the database layer where usually uh, all the data are stored and when there is the uh, entity relation uh, um, diagram with all the relationship between data. This is basically an overview about the back end. And, and of course, you, we will get into the detail, but just to give yeah. you the flavor um, about this part. So there are, in general, there are no prerequisites for this course. Uh, but, uh, uh, okay, this part of back end uh, will be, uh, the lectures will be managed by Professor Zakaria, but you will have us and Backhand, Zakaria, yeah. and, and you too. The exercise. Part. Okay, okay, but and and then we will, uh, Francesco and, and and Mattia will work on the tutoring on both backend and front end and on exercises about both backend and front end. Uh, but Professor Zakaria suggests some useful prerequisite for be more performant in in backend implementation and understand backend content. Um, have some knowledge about programming, imperative programming languages, which uh, I assume design students will not have. But this is not a problem. We will find a way to to give value to the, the contribution of designers. So these are more, more prerequisite for engineers. So they are prerequisites that are useful, not mandatory. Um, be having some skills about uh, CLI environment and Linux and Unix. Uh, basically, how to manage the, the content, uh, um, the teaching and, and learning content, and also to manage some programming components and some tools. And also, and that is a, a requirement both from the front end and for the back end and for design. Uh, being acquainted with some database design concepts, so having a knowledge about what is a relational uh, model, what is a, what are relational databases, what is an entity relationship model, 
what is a query language, a relational query language like SQL. And concerning this last point, I would like to make a question uh, for you to ask on the chat. Um, you are master students, you engineers are master students, you are assumed to have taken at least one or maybe two courses on databases. To my surprise, in the past, when I asked people what is an entity relationship model, people said, Bleh, I don't know. Or even worse, when I said, uh, give me an example of a conceptual model, uh, people didn't, didn't know how to, to reply. So the first question is, um, is uh, uh, how many of you do not know um, uh, what a relationship model is? Uh, and do not know what an entity uh, relationship model is. So ask no if you if you think you don't know, or you would not be able to define it. And be very okay. I think that okay. We have uh, okay. We have the chat with the names. Please trust us. We will forget about the names. So uh, well, there is no way to make the chat anonymous. Uh, but we will not keep track, uh, so be, uh, be very frank, uh, we will not keep track of the specific person who answers a uh, uh, question in a given way. So be very frank, we are not going to penalize you if you say, no, I don't know this, because it's important for us to know what you know, but above all, what you don't know, so that we can uh, tune, and, pers uh, tune and, 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 and adapt our teaching uh, to, to those who don't know, of course, because that is our duty. Okay, uh, then we will process again the, the questions. Okay, anyway, I, I would recommend you to refresh some of your, uh, uh, some of the basic content of your databases courses, because that will be useful uh, to, to get the best also for this course. Okay, uh, well, concerning front-end technology, again, that is your part, Francesco. Okay. Uh, the front-end technology instead is uh, what the user sees, uh, so it's um, concerned uh, a little bit of logic, of course, because uh, as I said before, uh, best practice is to run most of the logic in the application server, but uh, sometimes it's uh, necessary to run some logic also in the front-end. Um, a front-end uh, architecture basically is uh, composed of three blocks, uh, which is the style part, uh, which is the CSS part, uh, and we can use also teams, uh, like for example, the ones offered by Bootstrap. Uh, then there is uh, the logic part uh, that we can um, program uh, using, uh, we can coding using JavaScript and uh, other um, features that JavaScript offers to us, like for example, jQuery and Ajax. And, and then there is the simple page where all the content is rendered, uh, which is the HTML page. HTML is not a programming language, it's a markup language. Uh, and so it's, uh, it has a syntax very similar to, the, to a programming language, but it's not working like uh, this. But in the course, we will see how an HTML page is made of and uh, uh, what is the meaning of each tag and how to inject code inside an HTML page and how to style an HTML page. Again, um, maybe Francesco, if you type this question, I would like you to ask on this question. Uh, type it so we know what the yeah. answer to. So, um, uh, how many of you, I mean, is, uh, how many, who, who of you uh, has some knowledge of uh, JavaScript? Yeah, JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Okay, so no, yeah, okay. And now we have a, a rush. Of, okay, yes, 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 no, okay. No, just for statistic reason again, eh? so don't take it, um, it's, not, it's not too. Uh, how many of you are about J type? Aspetta un attimo che finiscono. Okay, just finish to answer. Okay, no, um, okay. Uh, uh, J query, vai, per me, yes. Okay. Aspetta, aspetta, no, ci non ti intendo per Ajax, ti preparo. Okay. We're just waiting for the flood of uh, mm -hmm. answers. Okay. 
OK, for simplicity, when you say yes or no, say yes jQuery or no jQuery, so otherwise we'll get, OK. Anyway, Ajax, bye. No, Ajax, no, okay. Ajax, okay. Okay. Okay, seems to, again, Ajax seems to be the thing that we should yeah. speak <laughs> we, more about. We will explain <laughs> okay. in, in this. Okay. Going on, okay. Uh, okay, let's assume that most of you know something about HTML or CSS. What about Bootstrap? No, yes. Ah, it's not Okay. <laughs> so again, it's just for statistic reason eh? and for customizing also the amount of teaching about each single stuff. Basta direi perché, okay? Ciò che CSS. let's just say, say, okay, CSS, dai. Okay, CSS. CSS is simple. Okay. okay. Uh, anyway, just to define the, the terms uh, for uh, the version that we would use for uh, HTML is, is HTML file, for CSS is three, so for Asia is, five. this is a five, huh? Yeah, no. JavaScript is. JavaScript is five, it's a five, five. 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 Okay. Um, as already, as Francesco explained, oh, HTML oh. five is the last version of a markup language mark, uh, to define the structural property of the web page. A markup, uh, this was a concept uh, which originated in, in the 80s, which is different from an imperative language. So markup language is a language uh, that um, is a, it's a language that a machine can interpret, can understand and interpret. And the concept of markup is that uh, uh, everything that you write is tagged, is marked with a, with a, a command, with, some, with an expression, we define a property. So markup languages are declarative language um, that are processed sequentially, different from um, imperative la programming language in which you give commands, explicit commands to the computer, also using a, um, a programming structure, if, then, while, for. The markup language allow you to, to take a text and to mark uh, the content with some properties. Uh, so HTML is used for defining the structural property and logical property um, of, of the application. CSS file, CSS, in our case version three, is again another declarative language, but it's not markup in, in the strict sense of the term. They define the visual part, the visual property of your application. JavaScript uh, is a, a programming language. Now is, we go into the, the, the field of imperative programming language, uh, which basically uh, allow you to uh, interpret the interaction property, uh, to describe and interpret the interaction properties of your web application. And Ajax is, uh, is an evolution of JavaScript uh, that provides you the feature to uh, communicate uh, with the back end. All these concepts, maybe just give you some key ideas, and all these concepts will be explained to you in the lectures. And, and this is an expansion of the previous, uh, the previous, sli uh, previous slide. Uh, these are the frameworks uh, that we use uh, for uh, back front end technology. Uh, how many of you, frameworks, how many of you are familiar? with the concept of, uh, of framework uh, as it's used in software, software engineering. So you probably have heard this term. Uh, OK. Or did you ever heard this term or not? OK, mostly yes. And uh, 
request to come in the list of JavaScript. Invece di, di mettere chi sia chi no, eh. di commentare quello che io scrivo con un pollice in alto e un pollice in basso. Ah, ok, da che sempre. Yes e... È uguale, no? sì. Ok, is there okay, we have a comment about how to improve the effectiveness of this online questionnaire uh, real time. We will consider it, uh, we will be better next time. Um, just okay, is there any of you who can give me a definition of framework? I mean, just you know, in simple words. Uh, what is your idea of a framework? Okay, or which example? Okay, that's a good point, Francesco. Which are the example of framework that you have in mind? If I ask you, give me an example of framework, or and give me a definition of what a framework is. Is anyone? Now? Okay. You're right. Okay. There are some comments here. They say jQuery is a library, not a framework. That is a very good point. That's right. just, let me just wait for a couple of more answers uh, and if there are any. Okay, and then leave Francesco to comment on this. Yes, you're right. Uh, you're right. jQuery is a library, not a framework, but in... Uh, so explain what is a library, explain what is a framework. Li library is just a bunch of codes that uh, usually extends some functionalities of um, a code that already exists, while a framework is a um, more complex architecture that provides um logic uh, a little bit of application logic and uh client side rendering all together uh, your example is uh, your, your example is correct because angular is a framework other framework uh, as angular are Vue or react for example and you're right jQuery is uh, is just a library but uh, we will use uh, jQuery as a um, uh, uh, we will use uh, jQuery in, uh, in the project uh, a lot and uh, we present as a framework because it's like um, a paradigm, a programming paradigm that we can use uh, in uh, front-end uh, coding uh, uh, and so this is why we uh, insert in uh, as a framework but of course you're right, it's not a framework, it's a library. Uh, just one, a couple of comments. Um, uh, in general, a framework, uh, so the, the general goal is uh, to support the programming reuse uh, in order to speed up uh, the programming uh, uh, F, uh, devel the development process. So usually under the term framework, uh, you put any software or collection of software, collection of code, that you can reuse and adapt to perform a given programming task, such as implementing the front-end technology, the front-end of your application. Then there are multiple levels of abstraction in this idea of, of, of reuse, uh, and in some cases like jQuery, you have a collection of pieces and you put things together and you, have, you just reuse pieces that, uh, pieces of code that, uh, uh, that uh, have a specific capability that uh, allow you to implement a specific functionality and usually the term library is I have a, just this collection and that's all I, I take pieces here and there. A framework typically is more powerful in, 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 so in that respect uh, jQuery is a library and Bootstrap is a framework. Uh, um, a framework is something a bit more powerful it has to do with reuse enable you to reuse uh, and to build upon uh, result uh, uh, created and made available by other expert programmers. A framework normally uh, have, uh, it's not just a, a flat collection of things or a hierarchical collection of things. Uh, it, it also has its own rules of, of use and of uh, communicating, uh, of creating communication uh, between the different pieces. So it also has some facility to reuse and integrate the different pieces. OK, anyway, the, the idea is that different from 30 years ago or more, you are not programming everything from scratch. You 
program an application, you develop a web application by reusing and adapting and integrating uh, codes that has been built by others. And in some cases, as, as a very high level, like in this case, very high level of, of engineering. So you program mostly by reuse, but reuse code by understanding how to put the different pieces together. Question? Yeah. Okay, uh, there is a question that say, when uh, do we use library? When do we reuse framework? It depends on your requirements. Uh, in some cases, the framework already does most of the things that you want to do, and then you use the entire framework. And the difficulty for you as programmer is to understand how to use it because you have a, a more powerful things. A more powerful things mean that you have a learning curve which is higher. You need you take more time to learn how to use it. In other cases, you have a library. You look at the library, say, okay, I need this piece, I need this piece, and and I I autonomously to understand how to put the pieces together. So it depends on the level of abstraction, your capability, on the power of, of, of what you have to do, and on the power of the tool, the framework, or library that uh, that uh, you want to use. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then there is the concept of responsi responsivity that uh, some of these frameworks support, some of the two that we will explain you support, which is the idea, which is related to the idea of responsive web design. So you design once. Uh, and deliver many. So you have one implementation and you can deliver it on multiple devices on multiple channels. So the challenge here is uh, uh, how to create something that uh, automatically adapts to the requirements, uh, visualization requirement, uh, delivery requirements of the different channels. So for example, when you have to design something for the large screen, it's different. Uh, the application should appear in a given way uh, versus when you have a normal PC screen. Again, the application should have the same contents, but this content should be presented and structured in a different way. And the same, the more the more you go towards smaller devices, the, uh, the more the problem become, become complex. So the general challenge is uh, what happens when I have the same application delivered to multiple devices where you have multiple devices that have their own presentation and, and display requirements. Huh? And uh, uh, how much should I have to adapt uh, my, my implementation to these different devices? And we will discuss the trade-off in this process. So uh, uh, design uh, one, a single, uh, have a single design versus have multiple designs for the different channels, uh, uh, having a single implementation versus have multiple implementation for different devices. And we will see how we can find a compromise so that you make things once and you deliver too many. Uh, is anyone, uh, is anyone uh, familiar with this concept of the responsive, uh, um, responsive uh, design and responsive uh, uh, de development of responsive applications? Or is that one of the first time that you hear this word? Yes, responsive. We'll be interested to know if uh, uh, this concept is more familiar to designer or to <laughs> or to engineers, but that we can do a further analysis maybe next time. Okay, just you know, I'm just trying to figure out to have a flavor of who are my students and you can get a flavor of who we are and so that we can adapt, make a responsive course, <laughs> deliver to many different profiles. Okay, now practical things. How is the, what is the form of this course? Well, last year we said ex cathedral lectures, <laughs> meaning uh, we are all passionately together in a room, uh, which is not the case because now we have a virtual room. But still, even if we have a virtual room, uh, uh, there is something that is more ex cathedra. So something which I we explain you something and you can ask questions. But basically, the model is one teacher multi speaking, multiple listener posing questions. Then uh, we hope uh, uh, if the situation recovers, uh, uh, to do some exercise and hands-on 
we used to do it in the past in which people students brought their laptop to the classroom and we do we did uh, live exercises we will see how to do it this time i think it's still possible uh, also with the virtual room uh, but we we will do some experiment be before using us testers the, the invariant part uh, is uh, uh, that the co this is a very uh, project based course so we you will learn by doing you will learn by doing your project uh, in the past we did an intense part of project tutoring and and now again i had to put the asterisk saying okay the tutoring modality we will depend on coronavirus of course uh, we will maintain tutoring we will see if it makes sense to make tutoring in a, a, a remote modality or rather made uh, make tutoring uh, uh, on demand based on a schedule of appointment in which you come to our office or to our lab uh, and each group gets uh, his own in individual tutoring. So yeah, uh, we will see how things evolve. Uh, the first part of the course is mainly lectures uh, and the exam is totally 100% uh, project based. And what uh, before telling you what you have to deliver, let me tell you what you have to do in the project. There are many activity. Uh, it's strongly recommended uh, to do teamwork. So to organize the project work uh, in teams. Uh, I also, of course, recommend uh, to have mixed team with the students with different backgrounds, particularly I definitely would not like to see uh, groups made by designers only. There are not many designers. They can bring an enormous contribution to the project, uh, but of course designers do not have the engineering skills to, for development. So frankly speaking, I don't think that a group made of designers only will be able to, to, uh, to deliver the implementation of the project. So I would recommend you to start the reasoning about how to, to, uh, to, to, to create the groups. Uh, in BEEP, there is a forum which is active in which you can uh, start uh, looking for partners and, and, uh, and figure out how to create uh, these groups. Uh, I said that teamwork, if possible, because I also we also understand that given the current situation, physical meeting might not be feasible. So let's see. OK, try to figure out if you can organize groups. Uh, we will accept a single group <laughs> uh, project, uh, um, but is we do not recommend it because it's really a heavy project. So the project is designed. The requirement for the project are conceived for being uh, uh, executed for uh, by by a group of people. It's really a lot, a lot of work for a single person. So reason about that start thinking and we might discuss it tomorrow in the next lessons what it may happen but the reason for teamwork is okay it's less work and you learn from each other you can split the work you try the experience of working of, uh, of cooperative working <coughs> which is the typical modality of working in the industry if you go and also in research by the way so it's an it's a it's a working experience it's more effective working experience and make uh, uh, the the effort uh, more reasonable. Anyway, these are the activities that you have to do. Not necessarily, indeed. Uh, I okay, the order has been a bit switched given the, the current situation. But you have to do conceptual design of a, of a uh, of a web application. An important point is that. Uh, we assign the specification for the project. We tell you what the project is about. We give you the minimum set of uh, types of content and types of structure that we want to implement. So we give you uh, three, four pages of specification. So you cannot come to us and say, okay, I would like to make uh, the website for my, for, the, for, for my girlfriend, Jim. No, you will do, have to do something related to our specification. We will go back to the issue specific of project specification in the next slides. So you have to do the design, the design, the conceptual design, according to the method that I will explain, and then report your design. So it's always thinking and reporting, or thinking, implementing, 
uh, reporting. So you also have to do prototypes with developing uh, using backend technology. In the case of backend technology, uh, we want to have a, a technological report. So it's not just programming using backend technology, it's also describing uh, the technology that you have used and how you have used. You will be given a format <coughs> of all these reports. These reports you do not uh, come up, come to us and say, okay, this is my report. You you will have to follow a given structure. So with a precise content, it's not thousands of pages. It is approximately 10 or 15 pages for, no, 10 for conceptual design, including picture is uh, how many for technology reporting? It's three, four pages. Yeah, for front-end technology, we release uh, the, the, the need of uh, reporting. It's just prototyping. So you have to do conceptual design, prototyping front end, the prototyping back end, and it has to do usability. Usability means you have to do inspection based usability evaluation of an assign of an existing website, not yours, and reporting your evaluation. What is inspection based? It will be explained tomorrow. And I have another slide later in which I, I tell you already what is the website that we ask you to evaluate using a technique which is called inspection based evaluation technique. <clears throat> so you can start working immediately on the project, uh, even without knowing anything about technology. You just need to, 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 uh, to listen the lesson and apply what I say in the lesson and use the slides and start using your evaluation, usability evaluation of the website that I will tell you in a minute. <clears throat> also, uh, in the past, uh, we found very useful uh, for students to evaluate their own website, so the product that they, the website that they develop, this had a drawback. The drawback is before doing the evaluation of your website for the project, your project website, you need to have implemented it. Otherwise, it's difficult to, uh, otherwise you don't evaluate anything. So we, we have decided that uh, uh, evaluating uh, uh, your own website, which is a, uh, Usually, a mu um, it's a fun. Uh, it's, not, it's not just work; it's also fun, and it's useful. It's an optional. So, so you finish your website uh, in time, and you have more time to do some user testing. So, it's a different technique that is used for your application. You are allowed to do so, and you get an option. Uh, you get a bonus. So, this activity is optional. It gets you a bonus, an extra points from zero to, to three extra points, okay? Uh, so these are the deliverable, and then we, we, we go to questions. Okay, you have one project, but multiple deliverables. The first usability study report, <clears throat> um, and that will be corrected by me. Uh, application design, which is corrected by me. Front-end uh, application design and, and, and mocha prototype. Uh, Front-end implementation which is uh, uh, the job of uh, Mattia Gianotti and Francesco Vona. Backend implementation will be evaluated by Professor Zaccaria with the help of, of Mattia and, and, um, and Francesco. And the second usability study, that will be my business. Uh, so again, the project specification are assigned by us. Uh, last, in, in the past, for example, we said, okay, you have to develop a website for a health institution, such as a hospital, a care center, a diagnostic center. And again, we, we didn't say just that, health, make a website for a health institution. We also um, uh, indicated some mandatory categories of contents and structure and navigation structure that we want to have uh, for uh, the application. So at the end, uh, the output that we evaluate are usability, the usability report for the assigned website, or two usability reports, one for the assigned website and one for your website. The design documentation, the prototype that you deliver, you, we will put the hands on your prototype and try it uh, and, and check if uh, uh, the implementation is consistent with the, the specification and with the um, uh, and with the um, with the specification and with the technology that we have uh, explained you, and then the technical documentation on the, on the back end. Uh, and these are examples of uh, 
I thought I would have to share the screen on Facebook. Okay, is there any question so far? So while, while you, you write question, I will share another thing. Just to show you an example. Voglio share the application that I've already mostrato. Aspetta un second. No, this one doesn't share. Yeah, tu devi ah. share. Sharing. One second that I, I show you things to share. Dovrebbe essere qua. Aspetta un second. Pagina web di Sì, questa devo dire, l'ho già tirata fuori. Aspetta, eccolo qua. Questa. Voglio condividere questo. Un attimo, sorry, gang. Mm? Questo? Okay. I'm showing sorry. this, okay. This is an example of a, of a website about a theater that was done by a group of students. Abbiamo delle richieste qua? Perché abbiamo cinque. No, non vuol dire. Ok, so... Can you, okay, you can share it. So we gave that this, in this case, we said, okay, you have to develop a, a website for a theater. And in the specification, in the specification, um, the specification that we gave to students, it was five pages of specification, said, okay, you have to talk about events, uh, about the companies uh, who, who perform in, the, uh, in, the, in these theaters, Event means performance, uh, sorry, special events are events such as seminar, uh, particular meetings, uh, uh, parties, uh, and what's on are the performances. Then about the, the companies performing there, about the artists and how uh, to buy tickets and general information about uh, uh, the, the theater. And so, for example, what's on, uh, you have to take time a bit. Um, Okay, we say on what's on, uh, um, uh, we didn't say it's called what's on, we just said, okay, you have to describe all performances. So all performances was a requirement in our specification. So we said you need to, 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 to group performance in all performances, or you have to group companies. Okay, take times. Uh, we also, okay, uh, uh seems to be okay uh a performance is is described by an image uh, or by a short abstract uh, and by it must have a link to the company and to the specific artist so when you press the company assuming that it works it's very slow so this is the kind of thing that you are expected forget about the layout here uh, it's, it just gives you the flavor of the dimension of the size of the, of the website uh, that you have to <coughs> that you have to uh, to deliver. Let me just go back uh, to the and share the slides again. So I assume that I have. Uh, um, okay, let me stop sharing one second. Share. I'm po fatigato così. Um, Course intro. Okay, grazie Francesco. Okay. I mean, we did some uh, practicing session in, in the past days, but I still get to be familiar. So, these are the two examples that you can check. <coughs> the evaluation criteria are based on project deliverables only. There is no oral exam unless in very special cases. And the special cases are when uh, we are not fully sure that that project is all your work. Um, so we suspect that uh, someone else outside the group uh, contribute to the project, uh, let's say in soft terms, or when we suspect that the group was not balanced. So it's important that um, the group is, is well balanced in terms of competence, but also in terms of effort. So we want to be sure that all students in the group uh, ha have uh, a specific role in the project work uh, and have uh, contributed with the same amount of uh, effort. So we, these are the weight that we give to the different part. Um, co completeness and cor correctness of the first usability study and, and the associate evaluation report is 10%. 
Design documentation quality, which means that you have produced a design documentation which is complete, correct, is 10%. The quality, the, the user experience quality of the prototype is 10%. By user experience quality, I will explain it tomorrow. The idea is that uh, is the evaluation of the usability. Uh, user experience is all aspects that have to do of what of how the user feels with your application. All the properties that have a direct relationship uh, with the um, with the end users. Uh, so we will evaluate your design in terms of usability. Um, partially, if there is a design in the team uh, aesthetics, uh, everything that make uh, the, uh, the your website uh, uh, appreciated uh, by the end user. Then uh, completeness and correctness of front end implementation is 35%. Speriamo che totale sia giusto. Completeness and correctness. A back-end technical do documentation is 20%. Uh, so there is a, an important amount of, of scores in the back-end on documentation. We must adjust it a bit because in, last year was a bit too much, but we have to rediscuss it uh, with Professor Zaccaria. Anyway, just to pinpoint that documentation is important. And completeness and correctness of back-end implementation is uh, 15% plus this variable bonus 0% three points for the second usability study. So the user testing on your website. Question at this point. No. OK, let's be a way to check a poly in Teams. What do you mean? Like a Zoom sondage. No, it's not the application at the moment. OK, I want to react for the point then. One second, I'm checking in the slides. OK, cool. OK, some question. Uh, um, are related to um, to specific uh, technology. Uh, the answer is in general is no. The set of technology is fixed, uh, so we're not going uh, to to use other technology. If not, uh, for this main reason that if you use different technologies, uh, typically students tend to use the technology that they know already, so they learn less. Uh, first reason. Second reason, we cannot compare the different projects. We want to be fair with all of you and say, okay, you are all evaluating on the same variable, on the same type of content. So, as I said at the beginning, uh, other technological choices could have been made. Uh, this for us is the best compromise between uh, ease of use, complexity, and power of the um, one second sorry there was the other phone uh, ringing okay so in general the, i have a single question for the, for all of you that say is that mandatory to, to use this technology for the front end or back end the answer is yes uh another question which is in, uh, meaningful is that uh, crucial is uh, will the evaluation for the project be, be different uh, if there is a designer in the group or not? Uh, okay. Well, really, we want to be as fair as possible. So we expect that if there is a designer in the group, uh, the designer will provide limited contribution to the implementation because they have a learning to learn many more things than the typical computer engineers. So we expect that if there is a designer in the group, the quality of content and the quality, the visual quality of the application is higher. So if there is a group made only by engineers, the visual quality, even though we give you some um, guidelines for improving visual quality, the visual quality we expect that uh, it's not your business. It's not something that we should expect from you, but it's something that we should expect from designers. So if you have a designer in the group, the designer uh, will have the difficulty understanding a language, a way of working, which is different from, from their own way. I also teach a design. I, I, in this semester, I also have a course of design. I've been teaching at the design school for 30 years. So I know how designers think. <laughs> Um, and, and all the difficulty of creating a good dialogue between designers and engineers is always a challenge. So this is a challenge, but it's also a value. 
you will really learn each other from each other a lot. So I do recommend to have mixed group. Uh, again, of course, we will consider uh, uh, bad visual design uh, a, 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 um, uh, a, um, a problem if we find it in a group in which we have a designer because it's an indicator that the designer has not participated uh, with all uh, his or her potential in the work, in the teamwork. Okay, so we have high expectation in terms of visual design from teams in which we have a designer. We have low expectation on visual design uh, on uh, 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 engineers only teams. We also expect the designer in, in, in a team uh, is able to, to be consistent uh, with the, the feasibility of a project because a typical, say, mistake uh, of designer is that they want to create a fantastic visual design which cannot be implemented within the time frame uh, of a project, uh, of a course project, uh, or within the program with the programming tool that you have. So also the designer must find a compromise between the best possible visual design and the reality and the technical feasibility. OK, so in general, uh, we expect that. And no, well, that, 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 that's all basic. I hope that I have answered your question and I hope that you don't perceive that a group of with or without designer is penalized. No, it's not penalized, but we will call we'll, we'll take an eye on the fact that uh, there is a designer or not. Uh, other questions? Uh, well, can you tell us uh, where the main mistake the product project is related to the front end implementation? What were this? Uh, you refer. OK, it seems that uh, uh, Mr. Ronato Scan is asking uh, uh, about an example of evaluation of previous project, mm -hmm. which is a very good uh, suggestion for teaching. We're not prepared. We, we need to have some material yeah, about that, <laughs> at least the project and the score. But that is a good thing that uh, thank you for the suggestion. We will make a, we will, we will reserve some, some time during the lecture to discuss uh, the evaluation of previous uh, previous projects. Um, OK, yes, I know there are many things to create uh, uh, to create uh, um, uh, to, to make surveys online. Uh, I'm we are aware of that. Uh, we are in the field of human computer interaction, which surveys and survey tools are very are, are very much used here. I want to, to keep it uh, a bit more interactive. I want to see yeah. it directly on the fly, uh, uh, even though in the future we might consider asking you some uh, in a more structured way, some specific question that you can answer by reflecting. Now I, I want to have the live feeling from you of what about what I'm saying. Was there another question? Okay. Okay. Uh, the other questions are partially answered in the next slides. So yeah. let me go. Again, the deadline. Okay. The other question about deadline timing are in the next slides. OK, what are the exams rules? As again, the project specification are assigned actually during the course. I, I will give you the general team to get the general topic today, but the detail specification I cannot give you that. I could give you the detail specification tomorrow, but you wouldn't understand the language probably because you don't know the modern language yet. So. The most important thing that we have uh, the same specification that hold for the exam calls in June and July. Then we change them in, in August, September. So for each exam session, we have a set of specification. And then they change again in uh, February. OK. First rule, so you have to follow specification and be aware if you start a project, uh, in June and then you change your mind and say, OK, we'll do it in September is really a very bad idea because in se for September you will have to, to do the project with different specification, which technically are very are, are the same. You need to, to do some programming with the same tools, but instead of doing, for example, a, a, a website on a theater, you have to do something on health. OK. In addition, uh, Please be a, balance your work because each single deliver must be sufficient. So we will not accept that, that uh, you. Well, what is it? Is anyone connected to the monitor? Um, be aware that uh, uh, 
all you have to deliver each part and each part should be sufficient so don't deliver something that is a total horrible thing for one part to say okay but i got 30 in the other part no matter if you have 30 in one part is one part is sufficient you have to redo the exam okay we also value the balance effort among team members so we expect that all members invest a comparable effort on the project no effort too. okay uh how do we check that uh, well um in the past when we had uh, uh, these uh, face to face tutoring sessions we could really see uh, the faces uh, of those who were always present who were making questions were investing uh, and, and we have a first uh, indication of the of how the effort was distributed during the tutoring which can be much more difficult now if we work in remote mode so, but anyway, we will ask you uh, to report, uh, uh, and that is missing from the slides, uh, we will add it. Uh, we will ask you to indicate who, who did what in the project. Uh, Professor Zakaria already does it for the backend part, asking who did this part, this part, this part. We will now extend it to all, pro to the all, uh, all deliverables. And then if we feel that the work was unbalanced, uh, we will call you and make you a short oral exam. As if not for other things, for asking you, okay, tell me face to face, looking at my eyes, who did so? Who did this and this? Who did not do almost uh, uh, Okay, you have understood. Okay. Ah, tomorrow is graduation day. Yes, tomorrow is graduation day. It's graduation day for the bachelor. Uh, so we, as far as I know, uh, there is no no lesson is suspended. Also because the batch, the the, the laurea um, event will be again remote. I don't know if you are aware of the fact that uh, we will go, me, not me, but my colleagues will go to the empty room dressed up like penguins with all the 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 the, the cap, the the toga, and so on. They will go to the empty room and they make the pro proclamation and they, they, they will announce the, the graduated students uh, in the empty room and people can connect to it uh, uh, online with the same mode uh, as we're using now. So, and in any case officially from the, uh, from the um, official uh, calendar of, of the School of Engineering, uh, there is no suspension. Okay, other lessons, uh, well, we didn't find that actually. We, we, okay, guys, I will send you a message. To our knowledge, and uh, in the calendar that we used, it was not suspended, only suspended for the for the bachelor courses. But you might be right, and something or we might have used them. We will check immediately. Other question, Francesco? No. Okay. Okay, and then the answer to when. Another question is, um, Okay, maybe uh, this is Professor the Viola Schiaffonati. I assume maybe she's a member of the of the uh, of the commission of the degree commission, so she might be forced to suspend. Okay, but to my knowledge, only those people are required to suspend. But I will check. I will let you know. The good point that we are online that does not change very much. So you don't risk to come to the empty classroom. Okay when to deliver the project material okay you have one two two possibilities case one you deliver everything in one shot all deliverables all materials are delivered uh, by an exam call by an, before or on the official exam days you deliver everything we will give you precise instruction where and how to deliver will be partially on beep and partially on other repository so sorry just a suspension we're checking francesco is checking the calendar the calendar and there is no suspension for the master degree program the master program no suspension with the exception of the teacher who cannot uh teach because they are a member of the um the commission okay so Okay, when to deliver, you can say, okay, I work, I take this course, I will do everything one shot, and I plan myself to deliver all material by an exam date, an exam call. Or uh, uh, intermediate delivery. 
basically you have the opportunity to to deliver some or or all parts during the course i must admit we're still fixing the schedule because as you can imagine we have, we had to reschedule almost everything anyway this is uh, the flow of intermediate uh, deliverables the first thing that you will be asked to deliver in itinerary eh, i will say uh, 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 during uh, during the course is first usability report second uh, the design documentation third uh, probably depending again on, on the current situation of the virus uh, also the back end and front end prototype uh, for sure, these two one usability report and the documentation can certainly be delivered during the course, and we will give you the dates tomorrow. So I reserve to 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 post the schedule tomorrow to, to check a number of things. Uh, maybe you might not be able, you might not have enough time to deliver uh, your prototype before the end of the course. What happened? Uh, that is an important question how many times can i submit and resubmit my 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 deliverables well again we distinguish if you have one shot delivery when you deliver you are done that is what you deliver you will be evaluated and you will get a score okay we can discuss the score but you cannot resubmit your project or if you want to resubmit your project you have to resubmit it in the next exam session not in the next exam date therefore changing the project changing the project teams and the changing the project uh, <coughs> specification okay same technical specification but on a different domain so this time will be about as you will see about uh mountain ski and uh, in september i don't know it might be about uh, uh i don't know about um, health services is for for coronavirus, hopefully not. Okay, so you can submit the entire project only once. If you choose to go for one shot delivery, you can submit the entire project once, once per exam session. So if you're not sufficient, you're not satisfied the score, okay, your 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 responsibility. You resubmit with a diff on a different uh, team on a different topic. In case of intermediate delivery, uh, you can submit. Uh, go back here. You can submit either the usability report. Okay, you can submit usability report. You can then submit the usability the design documentation. You will be evaluated on this part. And uh, if you are not satisfied or you are not sufficient, then uh, you can resubmit the revised version on the same theme. Okay, you can submit it with the entire project at an exam call. Okay. So you can, so this is a burden of us. So please don't submit uh, uh, really bad things. Try to do your bad, best to submit the best possible quality documents uh, and deliverables. We will evaluate it, we will score it, we will discuss it. And, and then you say, okay, I want to fix this part, professor. And we'll be back uh, um, at, the, at the first exam date with the revised version. Okay, that is something that you are allowed to do. OK, uh, is, is, this is an important part because that is something that sometimes sometimes rises some misunderstanding between teachers and students. So I want to be sure that you have clearly understood uh, these rules. Uh, I try to formulate it, try to formulate it in the best possible way, but I want to be sure that you have understood what happened. So one shot is simple. One shot project, take the score or redo everything. Intermediate deliver, you deliver it. In this in the order so you're not allowed to deliver the design documentation uh you have to deliver these two in this order according to the data that we will give you so you have to do the usability report then you will be evaluated in the meantime you prepare and deliver the design documentation you will be evaluated and for at least for this part we will see if there is time for you to deliver the prototype during the course or not uh, you will be evaluated you can resubmit these two parts uh, with the final a one shot uh, delivery during um, uh, at, at one exam date. So is everything, is there anything which is not clear uh, on these rules about? Okay, 
the theorem okay. after submitting the liver and the intermediate mode is photo may change it after the variation. That is exactly the point. We take the burden of correcting, pinpointing the things that are wrong, so you can fix these weaknesses and resubmit it with the entire project at an exam date. Okay, so I'm answering to Eduardo, and is that clear? Which part in order to be? Okay, what is the percentage of, for, uh, of each part in order to be considered sufficient? Oh, no, it, no guys, cannot be quantified. I mean, you're gonna say you did 50% of inspection or 50% of design documentation, 50% of design implementation. That is not, the, I mean, you have to do an entire evaluation work and report it. You have to do an entire design specification you have to do an entire implementation of the front end, an entire implementation of the back end. Then you can make mistake in doing so, but uh, you should do all things that you are requested to do. So in that sense, uh, it's not a matter of uh, how much is how well. Uh, OK. Uh, indeed, we will be very clear also in the implementation. We'll ask you say implement at least this number of items, at least this and this. So we will be very clear in this, in specifying you at least do these things. Okay. Uh, where are we going to present our project or it is just deliverable? Um, it is just deliverable because you are more than 100, you are one, you, you are less than previous year in which we have also bachelor students, but you're still a big group. Uh, we would like to raise the quality of our evaluation, our teaching. In other words, we, we will sacrifice the, the time for presentation, which will be, I mean, days, and it will be, you will be evaluated only on the deliverables. In case there is anything, we will, after the evaluation, we'll available to discuss the scores, and we may call you for a, for a meeting. Um, for a sort of oral discussion in case we have any issue that we want to clarify with you. Um, it's a, it's a pre, can I, okay. okay. No, 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 okay. If uh, you submit it in one shot, uh, even if, as I said, uh, let me go back to here. Okay. One second. Uh, okay, how many? If uh, you are not sufficient or you are not uh, satisfied of the final score, uh, for us it's the same case. You are not satisfied, but you understand that the mistake uh, that you did. But, so you said, okay, professor, the score is fair. I would like to improve it. Guys, it's really a lot of work to correct all this material. I mean, <laughs> try to do your best when you deliver. You will not be allowed to, to fix uh, the problem and resubmit unless you do it, do it uh, during uh, the, the course, in which we expect that uh, the mass of things to correct is a bit slower and we can distribute our work along the time. Okay, so the answer, the question is, uh, can, um, if, if we're not satisfied with the score, can we fix the issue and resubmit? The answer is no, if you submit the one score. Uh, uh, can we get constant feedbacks on our project? What if we're stuck and we need help? That is exactly the role of the teaching, the tutoring sessions. Uh, the way May, May the, the, May, the month of May is basically dedicated to tutoring. Usually this tutoring is done in the classroom uh, with many, uh, and, and the teaching assistant uh, spend many extra hours uh, 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 beside the one in the classroom, moving the student to our lab to make uh, to continue t tutoring. So the answer is we will give you as much support as possible. How it will depend uh, on the circumstances. If it is will be face to face, it will be remote or not. The issue of tutoring, uh, uh, I mean tutoring will start after all the uh, uh, all the uh, um, sorry. Uh, the technology tutoring will start after our technology lessons. The tutoring on usability and design will start after the lesson on usability and the lesson on design. Um, I have a, a structure of the schedule in the next slide. Does it, okay, does everybody have the same project? The answer is yes. 
you, all of you, will have to follow the same design specifications. Okay. Question? Okay, so this is the, the score schedule. It's very tentative. So lesson zero, I consider the lesson zero. Then uh, I have anticipated the lesson on usability because it's something that you can do. I know it's sort of, uh, it's a good exercise, first of all, and it's also a way for you to practice with the idea of usability. And it's something that you can do remotely and uh, Okay, so two lessons on usability tomorrow and next Tuesday. Then a lesson on visual design. Then two more, two lessons on conceptual design. And then at this point, uh, there will be usability and design tutoring in the classroom or online. And uh, around after uh, six weeks, you, you will be uh, you will be able to. We will set a deadline for submitting the usability and design. Um, uh, documentation, maybe in one date or in two days following the same. Um, because uh, uh, um, we had to reschedule, reschedule our entire uh, timeline uh, of task, also because we had to, to some conferences have been cancelled, some meeting has been cancelled. So we are really restructuring everything based on the recent news, uh, the news of this week. That's why the, the, the final schedule also with the deadline for intermediate delivery will be given tomorrow. But to give you the flavor on how the course is structured, it's two lessons on usability plus one in visual design, two lessons on conceptual design, front-end technology with tutoring, back-end technology with tutoring on both front-end and, and, and back-end. So that is the general structure of what uh, we hope we'll be able to offer. Okay. Okay. Uh, teaching material you will have. Uh, okay. There are some indications. Uh, Okay. The, the, okay. Again, we, we will give you in, on BB. You will find all the specifications. So part usability and design will be posted on BIP. And we'll invite you that at GitHub. Uh, Git. 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 Scusa. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, there are a number of online courses and official references. Uh, if you want to start browsing, then I have a look. But they will be reported again after each lesson. Okay. That is the very informal specification of the uh, design and development project. So it's very informal because I cannot give you something more formal unless we share a common design vocabulary. So you have to create a website for voluntary association and the content will be about people, activity, events, news, um, the association itself. So, but again, all these things will be specified more um, detail in further detail. There are also a number of relevant relationships. I mean, this content uh, are not just a tree of content. They have cross relations. So for example, the activity are related to the persons uh, who are responsible of this activity. Uh, act people are people, persons are related to events. Uh, events are related to activity. So you will have the specification. There's also a number of group of items, uh, group of pages, all activities, all people, all events. So. The design specification that I will give you are about uh, the type of content, the type of relationship, the type of groups. In the meantime, before you are really you are ready to understand this more detailed specification, my recommendation is uh, start uh, looking at um, any asso uh, asso a voluntary association. Is, I, mean, I hope that it's the right translation for associazione di volontariato. Anyone, uh, any association is not just um, uh, non-profit association is so it's voluntary something that does something for people for the society for the community okay so it's relatively broad so start looking at some examples start collecting some content start making up your idea of how you would like if if if, if you were a team uh, and it's a voluntary association come to you and said okay you are a great team from Polytechnico please create my website Okay, start thinking about how to do it, not from an implementation viewpoint, but from a design viewpoint. Okay, and uh, of course, the first step is to look to similar examples of website. Okay, so second, this is uh, the first study, the specification, again, it's very, of uh, what you will have to evaluate, uh, which is this one. Okay. 
this is a, a website about the Monte Rosa skin, about Massiccio de Monte Rosa. It's a, it's, it's a touristic website. You can have a look at it. Uh, I recommend to have a look at, uh, in this day just to get familiar with it. But tomorrow I will explain you how to perform usability uh, inspection based usability evaluation. So I will explain you tomorrow what to do on this website so that you can start inspecting and doing the evaluation of this website using these methods immediately after the lessons. The second study, as I said, oh, that's a mistake here. Sorry, it's, this is, of course, uh, your own website. Sorry about that. The second is uh, is a user testing of your own website and user testing will be explained uh, next week and you can do some cannot do it until you you have your website and i think it's all so any further question uh we decide what type of association the answer is yes choose your own type of association as far as it is this considered under the category volunt volunt voluntary association uh, um, will you upload these slides somewhere? Yes. Uh, uh, I, when we close the lesson, I will post them on BIP, and I will also post them uh, uh, post the uh, post the link to the video. Okay. By the way, I would say that now I stop the recording so that. Uh, Stop recording. So I'm stop recording.